Hey there, Sam. Inheritance using the class syntax is great. However, it has a major flaw. That is, it's not very flexible. I'll show you what I mean. Let's say we have a class called animal. An animal can eat and sleep. And we have different types of animals out there. Let's create a mammal class, which extends from the animal class. And also a bird class extends from the animal as well. Now, our first impression on birds is that they can fly. But that's not true. Ostrichs and penguin are birds, but they can't fly. So it probably would make sense if we create two further subclasses for bird. Bird that can fly and bird that can't fly. In the bird can fly class, we'll add the fly method. Birds that can't fly either need to know how to run or swim. Ostrich can run but can't swim, while penguin can swim but can't run. So what should we do here? Should we create two new classes that says bird can't fly but can swim and bird can't fly but run? Can you see where this is going? It's getting more and more complicated. Inheritance using class, or what we call classical inheritance, is not very flexible. And things will get even worse when we take account into the bird's diet. Some birds are herbivorous, and some are carnivorous. So we have vegan bird, and meat lover bird. And that means we have to create even more classes to categorize the birds. So for the bird can fly and bird can't fly classes, we need to create two additional variants for each of them. The vegan variant and the meat lover variant and things will get out of control very very quickly. For the bird can't fly class, we need to create a vegan and meat lover variant as well. And for each of them, we need a swim and run variant again. The number of our classes will increase exponentially. And that will be a big nightmare for us to manage in the long run. And that's also another issue with classical inheritance. It's very hard for us to share functions with other classes. For example, imagine the fly method here is a very complicated function. Birds can fly, but there are other animals that can fly too. For example, insect or mammals like bat. It's either we copy and paste the code, which is very, very bad, or assign the function using the prototype. Now, what if I tell you there's a solution that will solve everything that we just discussed? It is something called object composition rather than classical inheritance. So object composition is the idea of building an object using multiple smaller object blocks rather than defining a massive class where it is not flexible and hard to reuse. Let's take a look on how we can create an animal using the composition technique. First, we'll start with an animal object. And same as before, we'll have an it method inside the animal object. And now here's where we want to shift our mindset for a little bit. We need to think about what makes an animal rather than the animal category, because we're now going to build our animal using multiple building blocks. For example, I'll create a new building block called movable. And this movable object will contain all the logic to let an animal move. We'll also have another building block called flyable, which is for animals that can fly. And again, it contains all the logic for an animal to fly. In regards to diet, we can create two additional blocks called can eat meat and can eat veggies for herbivores and carnivores. If an animal eats both meat and veggies, then we'll simply add these two blocks to the animal. We'll also add our swimmable block for animals that can swim and runnable block. And now our building blocks are ready. Let's see how we can create an animal using these building blocks. Let's create a penguin, and it is equal to a function. And the function will return a new object. So the idea here is that we're going to merge the building blocks that we have written so far with this object. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to use the spread operator. So we'll unpack the building block that we need into the penguin object. So the penguin is an animal, so we need the animal object, and also the movable, swimmable, and the can eat meat object. And that's it. Our penguin object is completed. So the next time we want to create a new penguin, we just need to simply call our penguin function. Let's see if that works. And we see the object in the console. So far, so good. The second way of merging objects together is to use the object assigned function, where we discussed in a previous video. So basically, the first argument is the target object. In other words, the object where we want to merge the other objects into. And the following arguments are the objects that we want to merge. So again, it'll be animal, movable, swimmable, and can eat meat. And our console log is printing out the same as before. So it's working just fine. I prefer the spread operator way. So I'll comment out object assigned. We also want the ability to let the user to customize the penguin object. So the penguin function should take in an argument. I'll call it option and set the default value to an empty object. And back in the object, I'll just unpack the options. Now take a brief moment and review what we have done so far. Building an object using the compositional way is way cleaner and more flexible. We can reuse our building blocks on other objects as well. 
and we can easily add or take our features on different objects as we see fit. Isn't that neat? Let's create another example to make this concrete. I'll create an eagle, and again, it'll take in an option argument. And to build the eagle object, we need animal, movable, flyable, can it mate, and the option argument. We don't even need to care about classes anymore. And that is the beauty of composition. It is highly flexible, and we can reuse the building blocks in any way we like. Comparing against classical inheritance, the composition way is much cleaner, right? Let's test our ego function. And it works. Now that we learned about the benefit of using composition over inheritance, does that mean we should ditch inheritance completely? The answer is no. There are still cases where inheritance can be very useful. In the end, it's just a personal preference and you should decide the structure of your program. However, as a general rule, I do prefer composition over inheritance as I have less issues writing code in a composition way. Key takeaway for this lesson, inheritance is not very flexible and it can be hard to maintain, so use it sparingly. Object composition is a better way to create an object template rather than using a class. Object composition is the idea of building an object using smaller building blocks and join them together into one big object. That's it for now and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.